Dead batteries are the worst. Once they're all used up, I have to find a place to recycle them and keep them around until I can take enough of them to the thing. And whatever, it's just, why aren't all batteries rechargeable? Hey everyone, thanks for watching D News today. I'm Trace. We spent a lot of time on D News talking about batteries, and usually it's about how much they suck. But maybe we're not giving them a fair shake, okay? There is a lot of cool technology going into these tiny powerhouses. The first true battery was invented by Alessandro Volta in 1800, and he called it the voltaic cell, a term that we still use today. All batteries, even Volta's original ones, have an anode, electrode, and cathode. The anode, negative, provides electrons to the electrolyte through a chemical reaction. Then the cathode, positive, absorbs the electrons from that electrolyte. If you're like me, this is the opposite of how you expected power to flow from negative to positive, but hey, science. Batteries that you see a lot, AA, AAA, C, and D cells, are all alkaline batteries, which means the cathode is made of manganese dioxide, the anode is a zinc powder, and the electrolyte is a potassium hydroxide which is the alkali part. Alkali solutions are basic, not like basic the insult, but basic as opposed to acidic. Battery acids have a high pH, which makes them an alkali. pH is a way to describe a solution in chemistry as either acidic or alkali. P for power and H the symbol for hydrogen. Alkali battery acids have high levels of hydrogen ions, H+. The ions suck the electrons from the negative anode, and then the positively charged cathode sucks them from the electrolyte. Boom. You got a battery. When these anodes and cathodes are connected through, say, a flashlight or a cell phone, the electrons streaming from the anode to the cathode are what is powering the device. Eventually, in a regular battery, the anode gets corroded and the chemical reaction is spent, and then the battery's dead. Sidebar, sometimes hitting or shaking a near-dead flashlight makes it brighten. This is due to the nature of the chemical reactions going on in batteries. The electrolyte is corroding the anode, and when you smack it, that chemical reaction briefly kicks it up a notch. You can't do this forever, obviously, but it's not just in your head. It really does help a little. Non-rechargeables are called primary cells, and rechargeable batteries are called secondary cells. Once a primary cell is dead, it's pretty much dead. But when you plug a secondary cell into a wall power outlet, the charger forces electrons to stream in the opposite direction, recharging the battery. You could plug in a primary cell, but when you try and force electrons back through a primary cell, the chemical reaction doesn't reverse as efficiently. And in alkaline batteries, this can cause the electrolyte solution to generate a hydrogen gas in a confined space until So just don't do that. Most secondary cells you're going to come in contact with are lithium ion. Engineers use lithium in a lot of batteries because it's a highly reactive element. Lithium ion secondary cells use lithium cobalt oxide as a positive cathode and a simple carbon as an anode. With a combination of these elements, electrons can be pushed back and forth from the carbon to the lithium and back again a bunch of times, though not indefinitely. Batteries in your phone, for example, can only be recharged a couple hundred times and they'll slowly hold fewer and fewer electrons. The reason secondary cells can take the heat and recharge while primary cells can't has to do with the elements chosen in a bit of 200-year-old chemistry. Primary AA batteries use cheaper materials like manganese and are great for low-draw devices like flashlights and smoke detectors, while lithium is more expensive and great for high-draw devices like computers and phones. That's why you don't see AA-sized lithium-ion batteries. Nickel cadmium is an affordable middle ground with some voltage and some capacity for cameras and smaller devices where lithium ion just isn't practical. And if you're curious, nickel is the cathode and cadmium is the anode. When it comes to computers and devices that use lithium ion batteries, they probably have another thing in common, and that is Intel. Having Intel inside makes for better experiences outside. Intel creates the breakthrough technologies that make amazing experiences possible, driving innovation in processors, wearables, data centers, and devices for the Internet of Things. But how do you feel about batteries? Do you have another science question? Tell us down in the comments, and we are going to try and get to that in a future video. Thanks for watching D News. Please subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow.